But hey, my name is Omar. So happy to be here. I serve here on team. And I love Pray First. I just love being a part of VU, you know? It's the best church in the world. And I've traveled around, okay? I could tell you from experience. It's the best church in the world, really led by the best pastors in the world. Pastors Rich and Don Cherie. Come on, if you love your pastors. They impacted my life from the moment I met him. Before I met him, actually, I was binging his preachings, best preacher in the world. So preaching in front of him, not nervous at all. But hey, it's day 10 of 21 days. We're just about halfway there. But hey, I'm talking to the 7.30 a.m. crew. I'm sure you guys are crushing it. Fasting is easy. This is simple. But you know, when we fast is when we turn down the volume on our needs in the physical so we could turn up the volume on the spiritual. It's where we practice discipline to strengthen our spiritual lives. And it's not always easy, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. So we're almost halfway there. Let's finish strong. Okay, no matter where you started or where you are now, whatever you've been fasting, let's finish strong and watch how God will begin to move in your life like never before because we're creating space for Him to do so. Me and my family were talking around the dinner table about what fasting is and we were talking about what we're doing and my seven-year-old Avery, she goes, you know what, Dad? I'm going to fast everything that I hate. All the foods that I hate, I'm fasting those starting now. I'm like, doesn't really work like that. Have you ever heard somebody explaining their fast and you're like, eh, it doesn't really work like that. But hey, we're all on the journey. No judgment here. You do what you got to do. But if you're taking notes, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes around this idea from slave to surrender. From slave to surrender. And I just want to read four verses for you. And maybe we're going to get a new vision and a new perspective on what God was speaking to us through these verses. In Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 11, it says, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Somebody say body. body. So that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself, member or limb, to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Somebody say life. life. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time that we get together. We ask you, Lord, that you fill us, fill this room, Lord God. May we leave here, Lord God, with a revelation of who you are and who you're calling us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. But hey, it's during times of fasting when we say no to our bodies, to our the desires of, of our natural selves, we get to see how strong those desires really are. Isn't it wild? You may say, like, I'm not going to have chocolate for 21 days and all of a sudden this creature comes out of you i need chocolate now and that desire is strong you start to ask yourself wait a second who's really in charge here is it these desires of my body or is it the spirit of god who reigns in my body you know when they asked me to speak this morning they said hey would you speak this morning i said i'd love to gosh, that'd be awesome. Okay, here's your topic, the body and health. I'm like, oh God. My mind started racing. I got nervous. I'm like, what are we going to talk about? Do I talk about maybe the food pyramid? Should I, should I put it up here? Should we talk? Yeah, I got an idea. Sugar. Sugar is the devil. We will rebuke the sugar devils out of our bodies. Okay, no, that's, that's not good. Maybe we could do some exercise, like a morning workout. Adrian, could you do some burpees for us? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And then an idea came to me, baptisms in a cold plunge. What about if we cold plunge baptisms in the morning? Who's, who's in for it? Come on, raise your hand. Three people, Vlad's in, all right. I liked the passion in those ideas, but that wasn't it. 
I felt like God was leading me to these verses in Romans. And it is so important that we understand health and fitness for our bodies, how we steward our bodies. You know that how you steward your body is a testimony to those around you? It's a testimony of how we steward what God gave you. The first thing that God gave you was your body. How are you going to steward that thing? Like Pastor Rich said in week one of the collection, you can't steward what you don't understand. We need to understand healthy living habits. I'm not talking about being a professional athlete or six-pack abs, because that's what we imagine, right? When we think about health and fitness. Hey, my body's the temple, and this, battle, this temple's going to be shredded. People will come to worship at my temple. No, it's, it, it's not that. That's when we start to idolize the body. Dallas Willard said this about the body, and I think it's so true. Probably the least understood aspect of progress in Christ likeness is the role of the body in the spiritual life. He also says that our body is our first kingdom. So who reigns that kingdom? Who's the king of that kingdom? Underneath the surface, what is found in our bodies? How can you tell? Well, what are some of the reactions when things happen to you? When somebody cuts you off in traffic, what comes out of your body? When somebody gets promoted ahead of you at work, when you find out that somebody is paid more than you are, does anger, jealousy, hate, cursing, are those things readily coming out of your body? What about when you get in an argument with your spouse? What comes out of you? Me and my wife, Erica, we were arguing not too long ago. And, you know, things started to get heated. And we started to say things that we didn't mean. Anybody ever been there before? Got a few people. You know, later in the day when we're making up and saying our sorries, one of us said something that I'll never forget. I won't tell you who, <laughs> but here's what I said. I said, you know, when I said that thing that I said, I knew when I said it, it was wrong, but it felt good. I knew when I, when it was coming out of my body, that it was wrong, but it felt good. Why did it come out? Because it was in here. And that's how the body often works as an instrument of wickedness. It feels good in the moment, but it leads to death and destruction. So what do we do? How do we get this body that's reigned by sin, our mortal bodies, and change it? When we read in those verses, offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. In another verse in Romans, it says to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. This is true worship. When we offer our bodies as living sacrifice, we say, God, my body is not my own anymore. I give it to you. I want you to be the Lord of my body, of my flesh, Lord God. I don't want it to be reigned by sin anymore. I don't want to be a slave to it anymore. I want to be set free. Lord, I offer my body to you. And in just a few minutes, we're going to have that opportunity. But the first step is to surrender. The first step is to surrender it over to Him. Our habits, our bodies. You see, you were bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus purchased you. Your body is not your own. So when we surrender it to God, that's when it's true and proper worship. 
And that's how we're set free. You know, speaking about health and wellness, the healthiest thing you could do for your body is give it over to God. That's step number one. Say, God, my body is not my own, it's yours, Lord. I want you to reign in my body. And then the second step is to train. Now begins the training. Once we've given it over to God, we have to retrain our body to new habits. Because who knows, you may in a moment of prayer and worship, surrender your body to God, but then tomorrow go back willingly to your old master, to your old ways, to your old habits. And then you wonder, why do I continue to lose these battles? It's because you've never taken a moment to retrain your body. And it's through daily discipline that we retrain our body. The Bible says, take up your cross once a month. No, no, take up your cross once a week. No, no, no. How often? Daily. Take up your cross daily. Think about a cross. What is it? It's a device for death. And what's dying? Our flesh. It's our flesh that we have to kill every day. Take up our cross daily and retrain. How do we train through daily disciplines? Prayer, worship, reading of the Word of God, joining a crew, Bible studies. Attending church is a discipline that trains our bodies. These are things that will develop you. Your disciplines develop you. Who are you becoming? Look at your habits, look at your disciplines and you'll find out. Your disciplines will develop you from who you are to who God is calling you to be. And it starts with surrender. We can begin to train our eyes to see the good again. Our eyes are the windows to our soul. We can begin to train our tongues to speak life. Your tongue has the power of life and death. We be can begin to train our hands to lift up and encourage. Train your feet to go to where the needy are, to where the need is. We're re retraining our habits, our bodies, to serve our new master who's Jesus Christ, who purchased it on the cross when he died. It's no longer sin that will reign, but we're giving our bodies over to God who created us in the first place. So in just a few minutes, just like those verses says, we're gonna offer our bodies over to God as we pray and declare that sin is no longer our master, but it's God who reigns in us and through us. And watch how God will begin to move through you in natural ways like never before. It's just gonna start to well up from the inside of you. You're like, people are gonna look at you from far and say, there's something different about you. I can tell from far that you look different. You're acting different. What has gotten into you? You're gonna say, I surrendered my body to God. It's no longer sin who reigns in me, but it's Jesus. So we're going to take the next 15 minutes for individual prayer. And I just want to encourage you to take an inward look at who reigns inside of you. What has been coming out inside of you? Have you ever see, said these words, man, I just couldn't help myself? Or have you ever heard somebody say, that's just me, take it or leave it? That's not true. That's the sin reigning inside of you, but you can change. You could be transformed today in a moment of prayer and surrender. So for these next 15 minutes, the worship team is gonna be playing. We're gonna have a playlist playing. Let's begin to pray individually. You could move around the room. You could kneel down at your chairs. Let's take full advantage of the Spirit of God in this place. There's also a prayer team that's going to come up to the front and around the room. If you feel like you need prayer, that's what they're there for. Or you could take a moment to 
get together with somebody and pray and unload your burdens and have somebody pray over you. So, let, hey, let's take these next 15 minutes to do just that.